Hello, and welcome to a spooky season millinery video. My name is Ilona, I am a milliner based in London, and today I'm making a witch's hat. In this video, I'll be covering ways to change the shape of a standard crown block, and how to make your own upturned brim using a large downward mushroom block. Specifically, I want to make this pointy little number right here, which made an appearance in the Harry Potter film Goblet of Fire. It's the uniform of the Beau Batons girls. Although, as you can see, instead of blue, I've gone for purple because I needed to match this jumper. If you find this video interesting, please consider subscribing as this helps my videos reach more people. Just remember, this is my preferred method. There is no right or wrong way, just whatever works for you. Let's gather the materials and get started. First, I'd like to talk about this hat design. The hats in the film were designed by Philip Tracy. I would describe the shape as a tilted point hat with a small upturned brim. It reminds me of 1930s Elsa Schiaparelli hats. This kind of shape is sometimes known as a Robin Hood or a Tyrolean hat, although those ones usually have a feather sticking out. At first, I thought this hat was made using a suede felt. However, when I started researching the actual hats from the film, I found out that they were made out of fabric-covered buckram, which surprised me greatly as the fabric-covered hats take a very long time to make, and they made at least 10, if not more, for the film. Now, for my recreation, there are four methods I could have used. Number one, make a buckram shape and cover it in fabric, which is how Philip Tracy made the hats for the film. This would have been very long and tedious, and I don't have the right fashion fabric in my cupboard at the moment. Number two is to make an upturned brim block so that I can block the brim separately from the crown, thereby having a join just like in the original hat design. Then I can make the hat out of felt, and this would be long and tedious, as demonstrated here, here, and here. Although none of these block making techniques that I've already done would work for this kind of brim block. I would have to make the shape in buckram, reinforce it, wire it, and that's yet another brim block making method. Number three, block the crown, but then freeform the brim curve, which isn't that time consuming, but it's difficult to repeat if I wanted to make it again. Also, this method would be very difficult to have a crown to brim join, which is a key design element of the hat. Number four, modify both the crown and brim blocks. Block first the crown and then use the offcuts to block the brim. And out of all those options, I'm going to go with number four, as I am impatient and I want to make this hat in about a couple of days. First off, I need to analyse the proportions of the hat. The crown is about four squares across and two squares high, with an extra one square for the point. The brim is also one square wide on each side, but it is also diagonal, so I'll have to factor that in that it will be a little bit longer than one square. My poupée head Anne is 14 cm wide from the front, so dividing that by 4 gives me a value of 3.5 cm. Therefore, each square is 3.5 cm. I'm going to be modifying the shape of Anne to achieve a pointy tip. To do this, I'll be using some 6mm hemp rope and dressmaking pins. You could do this with a wooden crown block, but it is more difficult to pin into. The first step is to mark in the height of my crown, which I've decided to mark as 15.5 cm. This just seems like a sensible number. I'm putting a tape measure into the top of Anne using a pin and rotating it around. I'm using more pins to mark out the same distance all the way around. Then I'm pulling a rubber band over the pins. This means that I can take the pins out and my crown line will stay marked. Next, I'll need to find where to build my point. According to my proportion squares, it should start three squares across and two squares up. Helpfully, Anne has some seam lines running up her, so I don't need to measure this. I'm putting some pins into the spot where I'll be building my pointy tip. I formed a circle with a diameter of 3.5 centimeters. Now the exciting bit. It's time to build the point using my hemp rope. I'm starting with a knot at the center and spiraling the rope around until I reach the 3.5 centimeter diameter. Then I'll start to spiral it upwards. I've also tilted it slightly for a jaunty angle. I'm using dressmaking pins to secure it all in place. Instead of rope, you could use electrical cord, but I don't have any long enough, and actually I found the rope much easier to manipulate and pin into. 
don't forget to involve your familiar. Drusilla was very insistent that I need her help. I realised that I needed to smooth out the transition from the base of the point, so I'm adding more rope to the base. I also decided to bulk out my spiralled rope a little bit, so I'm using small bits of rope which I split into separate strands to fill in any gaps. There we go, I'm pretty happy with the shape, so let's test it. I'm going to block some buckram scraps over the top to see if I like the shape of the block. If you'd like a more detailed tutorial on how to block with buckram, I've linked to a video on that in the top right. I'm feeling really impatient today, so I'm using the iron to dry the buckram out faster. As I'm using scraps of buckram, I've got some uncovered patches. Not to worry, I'll just add in some triangles. It's all dry, so I'm going to draw on my front to back line and base line, and take it off. I'll fix the patch triangles in place using some pins for now, and later I'll cross stitch them in place. I'm super happy with the shape, so it's time to block the felt. I already stiffened it last week, the video on how to do that is in the top right. I've covered Anne in cling film to protect her. Then, once my hood is saturated with steam, I'm going to pull it down over the block. I used a few pins to secure it in place, but then I decided to use a blocking cord instead. My thinking behind this is that the design doesn't have a ribbon band to disguise the crown to brim joy, so I wanted to avoid pin marks. I gave it a quick brush with a natural bristle brush and left it to dry overnight. It's now the next day and time to take the felt off the block. Remember to always mark your front and back before taking anything off a block. I realised the only way to get the correct cutting line was to use the buckram mock-up. I put it inside the felt and cut along the bottom edge. I want to save the skirt off cut to make the brim, so I'm not going to cut across it and ruin it. Because there is no hiding the crown to brim join, the cut has to be super crisp. The way to do this is to cut, holding the scissors perpendicular to the felt edge, and not to let the points of the scissors touch in a snipping action. Cut in to about three quarters of the way up the scissor blade, reopen, move, and repeat. Moving on to the brim. I'm going to be using a combination of a large flat mushroom block and a steeper curved mushroom block. I made these two blocks myself using polyurethane foam. I'll link to my video on that at the top right. I don't have a collar block, so I'll be using a crown to block in my collar join instead. I've stuck it down to the block using masking tape and used cling film to protect the wood. Time to block! And yes, I know this technically isn't correct, I'm not blocking a brim using a capeline. But you know what, I don't like waste and this cone turned out to be just big enough. Once again, I'm using blocking cords to avoid pinhole marks. This step turned out to be useless, I'm marking out a 6cm distance all the way around using soap. By the time I finished shaping the brim, all the soap had rubbed off. I don't recommend doing this. Next, the upturned brim sweep. I'm giving the felt a quick brush first, and then just flip up a side of the brim. It's that simple. Although, after leaving it to dry overnight, I decided to come back to it and add some finesse. The downward curve was too steep for my liking, so I'm re-blocking the brim on my larger, flatter mushroom block. Here's where I had a brilliant idea. To support the upward curve, I could use a few of my hair rats. First, I thought I'd put them to the inside of the curve, but I didn't like the fit. Then, I thought I'd stick them to the outside using masking tape, but they came off too easily. Finally, I pinned them in place to the block, and this really worked a treat. Except, then I decided to switch the brim block back onto the steeper mushroom block to do the original flip-up motion. This time, I left the other side flat as it had been on the other block. I pop the hair rat supports back under the sweep and voila! Now it's time to mark and cut the brim. I've marked on my front and back using a couple of pins. Before taking it off the block I need to mark my collar height. Silly me brought the wrong size petersham for the head size, so I will have a shorter collar than I would like. I'm using a sewing gauge to help me be super accurate. I've put the crown on temporarily to get an idea of proportions. I seem to recall my brim ended up being 5cm wide most of the way around, and 7cm on the up sweep. I was very brave and decided not to wire or edge finish this brim, so I'm being super careful with my scissors to get a crisp edge.
Wherever I didn't manage to get a clean cut, I'm using fine grit sandpaper to even out any jagged edges. Back to the crown, I cut one centimeter off the bottom as I felt it was a little too tall. First, I've sewn my Petersham ribbon to my head size and sewn on my label. Then, and I know this is super counterintuitive, I'm going to sew my ribbon to my brim before joining the crown to the brim. Let me explain. Without the crown attached to the brim, it's much easier to sew the Petersham using invisible stitches as I only have to worry about being invisible on the ribbon side. To create the invisible stitch, I pass my needle up from the felt side through to the ribbon, aiming to go through an apex of the little Petersham archways. I then catch only a couple of threads of the Petersham and pass it back to the felt side. Travel along three arches and repeat. Once again, Drusilla has insisted on helping. Now that the ribbon is sewn, I need to join the crown to the brim. It's good practice to use waxed thread for this part. To wax the thread, I'm passing a few lengths through a block of beeswax. Five passes later, I'm going to iron the thread with a hot dry iron between a folded sheet of paper. Finally, the crown to brim join. As there is no decorative ribbon to disguise the join, I'm going to use invisible stitches. This is really easy on felt. I have a more detailed video on how to do this linked in the top right corner. That video also shows how to invisibly sew Petersham ribbon. To complete the look, I require a broomstick. I scavenge the gnarly stick and twigs. As you can tell, I am an experienced broomstick picker. Only forage from what has already been cut. Don't take from the live trees. That's not fair. Once I got home, I sawed off the ends and used secateurs to remove all the nodes. Then, I scraped off all the bark using a metal spatula. Make sure your familiar bonds with the broomstick during the making process. Once the bark was off, I washed and oiled the stick and proceeded to attach the twigs using electrical tape. To cover the electrical tape, I'm using hemp rope. And now, please join me in welcoming the lovely ladies of the Bow Batten's Academy of Magic. I've chosen to style my hat with a self-made black 1930s style trumpet skirt from Gertie's Night and Day dress patterns. I'm also wearing an alpaca wool sweater from And Other Stories, which has 1930s style puff sleeves. It's super warm and cosy and I absolutely love the colour. I have a small confession to make. Once I had completed my hat, I found a second-hand upturned brim block to buy online. I don't think there's anything wrong with my method of doing this brim using the rope and the hair bun, but it did take longer than if I'd had a block to hand. If I wanted to make this hat again, and I think I do, this just wouldn't be financially viable due to the time it takes. So I would say that if you want to make this as a one-off hat just for yourself, this method is perfect. But when it comes to producing more than one of the same model, it's best to invest in a block. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Please like and subscribe. This really helps me grow and reach a larger audience. For more hair related content, you can follow me on Instagram at Biolona Millinery. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.